I think the beauty of a neurosurgical career is that the challenges don't go away. It's a lot like uh, knowing that you've climbed just to the lowest reaches of a tall mountain. Well, I think the big uh, challenge is that the whole way that we're looking at the world is starting to change. Uh, it's really integrating kinds of information that are not in our direct visual path. So any microscope now has got to be able to see in multiple spectra, and we can see that it's doing that with infrared and uh, uh, with fluorescein. But beyond that, you know, we're starting to get into exoscopes and into other devices that are moving into parts of the visual spectrum that are maybe not what we're used to seeing, uh, ways that we're not used to visualizing. That ability of the scope now to feel weightless and to lock into position and in a much larger area of the surgical field is really one of those just intuitive things uh, that we had almost gotten used to the way it was where it had to drop a little bit or shake a little bit and the fact that it doesn't do that anymore is inherently pleasing. I'm not actually sure I can tell you that that's going to change the outcome of surgery a great deal, um, but it feels like it's going to. It feels reassuring and good and I wouldn't want a microscope that didn't do that now that I could have it. So the robotic repositioning is is something which the capabilities of micro make possible but that we really feel strongly about uh, i could absolutely anticipate a time in the future where there's a ruptured aneurysm there's bleeding but we've locked that spot and even though that's not where we're looking we can hit a button or tell the microscope and it will go right back to that spot so that even though the blood is everywhere we know that that's where we're trying to get to uh, that's a more dramatic example, but uh, on a tumor, there may be areas you know are troublesome or some key structure uh, you protected. Bookmarking that, uh, being able to come back to your trajectory uh, could be very helpful to finish out that area and to do it safely and actually could decrease the operating time uh, because you don't have to rediscover things you already have. So uh, that's a feature I'm really looking forward to using. The position memory allows you to set these reminders or return to views that worked before and um, in the end kind of integrate how you put these together in your operative plan. A great example would be taking out a cavernous malformation, seeing a little uh, remnant or a little portion that sort of um, is like a satellite sticking off in a different direction, but not wanting to forget that but keep working on an active portion that you're freeing up from a tough edge. So it would allow you to uh, almost make a footnote or uh, a bookmark or uh, some kind of a mark in the field where you need to go back to to remove a portion of the lesion. When we're working maybe in a deep uh, cistern, in deep, deep narrow places, uh, robotic enhancement uh, and minimal movements uh, all focused on the same point can be also of great help, especially to get different angles of the same uh, structure without needing to move the whole thing. You know? I think the robotic repositioning saves a lot of time, so you don't have to go back and redefine what you've already defined. By combining that with, with image guidance, you can go back to the same point of interest uh, over and over again, and by being able to store them in memory and store several different points of interest, it will not only save time, but I think increase the accuracy of our operative procedures. The application on which you can focus one uh, one spot and moving around the spot, it's very important for me uh, in um, in cranial based surgery. Maybe very important and in minimal invasive macrodiscectomy, for example, in spinal in spinal uh, surgery and in vascular surgery, for example, for clipping aneurysms, you put the micro on the spot and you can move around. The robotically assisted positioning to me is the ability when I need to have the scope go somewhere else to get it there easily. But in a simple microdisc, the scope is repositioned probably 50 to 100 times during the case. You probably have four to 500 passes of instruments in and out of the field in a 45 minute case. So the scope is in constant motion. The Kinevo system added a whole level of ease to that in, in the way the robotic assisted arm moves and, and repositions. You're not moving the big mass, it just seems to respond instantly. In the ability to lock on a point where I'm working and then use the point lock. Throughout the procedure, there are points in time where you, you probably have to remove the scope from the field for a short period of time 
to, to get an X-ray for verification of position to, uh, uh, to to move our sea arm in and out as we put in implants and and check positions and then return the scope quickly to the same position. So if I have the ability to benchmark my position and just lock it, pick the scope up and set it aside, have the X-ray taken, hit a button, have it return right to my working position without taking the time to reposition everything. Again, it's an advantage in terms of, of time and functionality.